Hello beautiful people, my name is Amanda Zitto and it is the first time in a very long time that there has been decent weather and blue skies in Portland so I'm out and about on the bike. I didn't really have a planned topic for today so I'm going to be answering some of the questions that you guys have left me in the comments in the last week or so. If you are new to the channel, I make motorcycle travel vlogs and general how to's for motorcycle camping and long distance motorcycle travel in hopes that you can get out and do the thing too. My first question from Mark McGuire. You have gone from anonymity of the pilgrimage to a YouTube celeb. Wouldn't, wouldn't say that. Which do you prefer when on a trip? Meaning, can it sometimes be time consuming if people recognize you when you are trying to get where you are going or trying to get miles in? I don't actually get recognized that much on the road. Most of the time when I do get recognized, it's at motorcycling events or a handful of times there have been people who come into my new job and recognize me, which has been awesome. Even when people do recognize me, it's always a positive experience. I always come away from it like feeling super happy and just stoked about the whole thing. So never feel shy or weird if you see me. Come say hi. I love it, it's exciting. <laughs> as far as like trying to get where I'm going and trying to make miles, like that's like one of the easiest things to do. If I don't wanna to talk to people, I don't take my helmet off. And normally people get the hint. And even the handful of times where I've had people come up to me, even when I do have my helmet on, all I have to do is like go like this or something. Like I can't hear you and they kind of get the gist and they leave me alone. But that doesn't happen a whole lot. Most of the time I'm kind of glad to talk to somebody for like a minute because it could be the first time that I've opened my mouth that day. <laughs> the next question that I got this week is actually on my Magruder video and it was as simple as what is the distance between gas stations when you ride the Magruder? So from the gas station in Elk City to the closest gas station when you exit the Magruder corridor, which is actually in Darby, it is 125 miles. Hippo Drones asked if I was a vegetarian. I am not. I do tend to eat more veggie based food when I'm on the road. The reason I eat mostly veggies when I'm at camp is because I'm lazy and I don't like to store and clean up after cooking raw meat. Um, it's like a whole nother step and I'm always worried that I didn't do a thorough enough job So I just avoid it in general. I will carry a packet of tuna every once in a while But other than that, I really don't like canned meat. It's just not my jam But I do like summer sausage, but summer sausages can be quite expensive All right next question from my video last week. Do I carry a cooler? I do not. I have tried lots of different variations of coolers. I have tried carrying like a regular like go to work lunch cooler so it has like a plastic lining so none of my food gets crunched. It just takes up way way too much space on the bike and uh, I quickly stopped carrying it. Then I found like this roll top soft side cooler at Target which I used for quite a while actually partially because it was also waterproof so I could put other things in it when I wasn't using it to keep food in. Eventually I stopped carrying that too because I really wasn't ever using it for food. Anyway, long story short, no, I do not carry a cooler. All right, my last question is from Roger and he asked me if I carry bear spray when I go dispersed camping. And to be totally honest, 80% of the time I don't. Partially because a lot of the camping that I do is in Oregon and Washington and most of the bear activity that they experience is actually from black bears and they are way more scared of you than you are of them. So most of the time all you have to do is make sure that you're talking to yourself at camp, making noise, and I don't mean bear bells, and I don't mean whistles, I mean talking to yourself, singing to yourself. If you're going camping with somebody else, talking to them, holding a conversation. Bears can tell that we're human by the sound of our voice. So other sounds like bells and whistles and that kind of stuff, that's just a curiosity thing. They're gonna be like, oh, what is that? Ooh, I smell food, I should go check that out. Most of the time, a well-fed bear, even if they do smell food at your camp, if you're talking and they recognize, oh, that's a human, I don't want to deal with that. 
This isn't just arbitrary information, by the way. This is information that I received from the good folks at the Montana Grizzly Encounter. So they have to take care of grizzlies, so I kind of trust their, what they have to say. <laughs> It is really important, however, if you are going to camp in an active bear area that you do carry bear spray and that you take proper care of your food, either carry a bear vault or do a proper food hang a good hundred feet from where you're camping. I also highly recommend if you do camp in a bear active area, you don't eat in your tent, don't make food inside your tent and keep anything that has a smell, including body deodorants, lotions, anything like that, toothpaste needs to stay in your food bag as well. Most of the places that you can camp at in Montana, Idaho that have high active bear population are going to have uh, food storage options so that you could lock your food away in these containers that bears can't open. They also have safe places to dispose of trash that bears can't get into either. I did carry bear spray on the whole of the pilgrimage mainly because I was like, well, one thing, two purposes. One, for bears, and two, for unwanted male attention. <laughs> Thankfully, I never had to use it. <laughs> I will leave some resources down in the description about how to properly hang your food in a bear active area if you cannot afford a bear vault. Okay, the sun is going down. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. If you like this content and would like to support this channel for as little as $1 a month, you can get early access to videos like these over on my Patreon. If that's not up your alley, that is totally okay. I have other ways you can support me down in the description. If you can't do any of that, that is absolutely okay. I appreciate you guys just for watching these videos every week. And in the meantime, guys, I will see you later. Question for the end screen crew, because now I'm curious, do you carry a cooler? <laughs> I will always, always miss Montana when I'm not there, but Oregon, you pretty.